We are the heat changers. And are everywhere. Uh, but what people forget, heat is minimum and the demand for a single household is even up to 75% heat and not power. Depends for sure in which country and climate zone uh, you live. So we have to work, create awareness, inform, discuss and inspire people to motivate them to act for the use of sustainable, true, green, effective technologies like solar thermal. I wonder if this winter in particular has been any different for you in terms of awareness about the energy sources that we use in Europe for heating? Oh gosh, definitely. Just yesterday I was looking at my heating bill wondering if I wanted to stay with my green energy or if I should cut some cost by going with more traditional sources. She's Kate Zervinsky. She was born in the U.S. and lives in Germany. She works as a freelance workshop facilitator, helping teams and groups work to achieve their outcomes through meaningful connection and participation. In a previous life, she worked in the e-mobility space as a digital product manager, so has a basic understanding of European energy infrastructure. Although there is certainly a lot to do, people in Europe are more aware about renewable energies in general, compared, for instance, to Mexico. The market shares are way bigger. There are more options, brands, and policies that support the use. So how different or similar is the awareness in the U.S. compared to Europe? I'd say it's someplace in between. I remember 10 years ago when I moved to Berlin, I was completely confused about the ability to make a choice in my energy provider. By far, most markets in the U.S. are a local monopoly, And so when you move into a new place, whether you rent or you own, you only have one option, and what they have is what you get. Okay, so it's really different. Well, individual action does make an impact, and this is one of the core messages of the heat changers. However, public policies do accelerate massively the implementation of renewable energies. Have you heard about the Fit for 55 package of the European Union? No, I haven't. What is it? In order to achieve the, the ambitious goal of reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions with 55% by 2030, the European Commission launched this package with revisions to current policies or new policies that would help us reach the 55% reduction. So there are already policies in, uh, in place, but we have to adapt them and to change them to be fit for the 55% uh, reduction. So the ambitious goal has to be followed by more ambitious policies. She is Alexandra Sutu, Communications and Event Manager of Solar Heat Europe, the voice of the solar thermal industry that encourages EU policymakers to shape a fair context. Alexandra, that sounds like an enormous initiative and we have less than seven years left. How can Solar Heat Europe influence policies to favor solar energy? Some of the directives that are part of the, this package are the Renewable Energy Directive, which of course is of interest for us, the Energy Efficiency Directive and the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. And uh, we will, of course, focus on having solar thermal represented uh, properly. If we look at the Renewable Energy Directive and the Energy Efficiency Directive, there are a lot of targets there. So you have the overall target for renewables, you have a target for uh, heating and cooling, a target for uh, buildings, industry and so on, a target for energy efficiency. We want solar thermal to be represented properly because the technology can contribute to all these uh, targets. So by using uh, solar thermal, for example, in a, in a specific country, but by using uh, and deploying more solar thermal, you can cross-check uh, three or four targets at the, at the same time. Another important topic, which is also part of the Renewable Energy Directive, is permitting, which uh, sometimes represents a bottleneck for large projects. It takes a lot of time to, to get the permits. And uh, we are also focusing on that, and we want to bring the discussion and to raise awareness on uh, 
uh, these go-to areas closer to cities. This is something that we need when it comes to heating, to to have uh, specific areas allocated for uh, for solar thermals that are closer to to cities. Wait. So that means that those huge solar farms next to the autobahn are not only supplying solar power to the grid, but also solar heating to cities? How does that work? Well, they do look alike, but they are in fact two different types of technologies. Photovoltaic or PV plants transform solar energy into electricity, whereas large solar heating plants supply hot water to district heating networks. Primatech has therefore developed product portfolio of large area collectors, especially for use in district heating and industry, whose uh, quality is characterized by uh, operationally optimized system properties, safety and durability. He is Patrick Valland, Head of Marketing and Sales, Division Systems of Green One Tech one of the world's largest solar thermal flat plate collector manufacturers. The energy performance of uh, buildings directive, so how we can improve our buildings. And um, one of the main topics for us here is the solar mandate. This means to have solar systems on all new and renovated houses. The EU directive uh, clearly states uh, this includes all solar technologies, so uh, both PV and solar thermal. I see. So solar mandates are a way to ensure that a bigger share of electricity and heating in buildings comes from solar. But uh, sometimes to the national level, this uh, solar technology translates as uh, only PV. We want to make sure that the European uh, guideline, which includes all solar technologies, will be translated as such also at uh, the national level. A member state, so a country, will get these guidelines from European level. But as I said, they are pretty general. Then the country can choose what technologies they are using and so on, you know. So it's, uh, it's pretty important to, to raise awareness at the national level and to make sure that solar thermal is included and used. <laughs> That's the most important thing. For sure. More awareness is essential, especially for end consumers. So we understand that there is a way to get a lower heating bill and make a contribution to CO2 reduction. I can imagine that there are a lot of startups with solar technology in early stages of development. They must need a lot of support to take off. Actually, solar heating technologies have quite a long history and there are big players which are not only successful in the European market, but are also expert champions abroad. Let's take Green One Tech as example. It has an annual production capacity of more than 1.6 million square meters of collectors, highly automated process secure robotic production lines, offers the highest quality products with excellent delivery performance and reliability, made in Austria. It is certified to ISO 9001 and ISO 14001 standards and has more than 30 years of experience in the solar market. Let's say it was the idea from our founder. When he starts the business 30 years ago, he always wanted to be a world market leader. And he really achieved it after some years. So Green One Tech was the first company globally who produced 1 million square meter of flat plate collectors in one year. I think this is an amazing figure. And this was already so uh, 70 years ago. And uh, this was because our owner uh, was our owner and pioneer in the solar market, Robert Kandel, established the first manufacturing robots lines for solar thermal uh, collectors decades ago. In the European solar thermal industry, companies have different business models. There are collector manufacturers, system integrators, a wide range of suppliers of components and service providers. Most collector manufacturers have both the OEM line and their own brand for small residential systems and large systems for industrial clients or district heating networks. Most of them are active in the B2B market only. We have OEM, white labeling, so we have more than 600 
customize collectors and flexibility uh, experience, the main reason to show screen one time. And of course, the product quality, even after 30 years, our first installed collectors are still running. I think this is amazing. Recently, I was talking to Alexandra about the market development from the last years, and she commented on the results from the latest report of Solar Heat Europe. It is a publication with market statistics from the most relevant countries in the European Union. Now seeing a very good uh, recovery after the pandemic. I think it's important to mention this because the uh, entire world slowed down during the, the pandemic, with, uh, which means also our sector. Uh, but we had a very good recovery and overall a very good uh, year in uh, 2021 with uh, various countries growing uh, two or even three digits. So I think uh, for some of them, uh, this represents also a record in terms of, uh, of growth. This uh, growth is uh, confirmed uh, for uh, also for last year, so for 2022. And uh, the forecast for uh, this year, for 2023, uh, is also pretty positive, showing us the same ascendant uh, path for the sector. Okay, cool. So solar power is growing in Germany and, fingers crossed, it'll be the same for solar heating. What about the other markets in Europe? It's so diverse in terms of climate and also infrastructure. What are other countries doing in terms of solar for heating? Germany remains the largest market, so such also uh, an attractive one. In Germany, we have a stable growth each year. A similar case is for Greece, which, uh, for example, even during the pandemic was uh, not affected so, so badly. So this is a, a market that uh, has a stable growth and uh, it's also a market that exports a lot outside of Europe. Then uh, one of the surprises, uh, let's say, is, uh, is Italy, which uh, now is in the top uh, three uh, markets. Italy grew a lot, mainly thanks to favorable policies, such as the, the super bonus. So this was a support scheme from the government, which was extended. So uh, I think it's still happening at the moment. And uh, most probably it will be followed by another uh, support scheme for building renovation that uh, will uh, for sure boost sales for, uh, for solar thermal. We also have France and the, and the Netherlands. Uh, and one of the, the trends that we see here is uh, more and more uh, large scale systems for, for district heating and industrial processes. And uh, one example is the, the solar district heating system in, in Groningen in uh, the Netherlands. This is uh, one of the largest solar thermal plants in the, the world, 37 megawatt, and uh, then will uh, give carbon-free heating to 10,000 citizens in the Groningen uh, area. Oh, well, I had no idea. How do the companies making these products reach consumers? Marketing is indeed an issue because many of the companies are in the B2B sector so they do not necessarily communicate to consumers directly. Usually that part is left to the installers. Some companies stay local and have a rather regional marketing and sales strategy for each of their target groups, meaning the residential, the industrial, the commercial, and the district heating sector. International players work with distributors or agents from their target markets. Green One Tech is delivering this product to 119 countries. So for us, it's a huge challenge promoting our brand globally. So I think the best effective way you can do is to have a clear, understandable homepage fulfilling actual needs uh, for a good CEO performance and offer it in different languages. Additionally, you have to have visibility to be social media platforms and also a very un uh, underestimated point uh, is an easy way to get in contact with your sales team or, or the right contact person. So uh, you have to have in your inquiry process chain uh, a good loop to make a great experience in the first contact. We uh, have to work together in marketing, um, uh, with marketing activities with our customers in their local country because they know at its best the requirement, the culture and the tone of voice to speak to the local people. Also, the local 
ability, like taking part in affairs, uh, is very important. People need an honest face behind the product. We are convinced this is boosting our business. By the way, it's remarkable that Ring One Tech will exhibit at three events in Europe in 2023, including, of course, InterSolar Europe, which will take place from June 14 to 16 in Munich, Germany. I'm so grateful for this conversation today. I really did not understand the difference between solar power and solar heating and feel better as a consumer just with that knowledge alone, let alone knowing how big this industry is and how many opportunities we have to yeah, work on our emissions and also potentially save some money. It is a well-established technology in the residential market. The industrial sector and district heating networks start to acknowledge solar heat as an affordable, reliable, and CO2-free heat source. So... Let's heat with solar heat. And are you ready to become a heat changer? 